Hey everybody, um, just to make sure this is live, this is my first time going live ever. So um, today we're going to do some board level repairs. I figured a couple of people have been wondering where I'm at. Um, I'm here, I'm you know watching quietly from the background just trying to get through the queue. Um, Jesse had, as many of you know, is moving so he's kind of been sending me business to keep me busy so I appreciate that. Um, but so what we're going to do today is we're going to do some repairs. I have an iPhone 11 uh, that has a baseband issue. We'll get to that one. Um, I have an iPad Air that appear or an Air 2 actually that appears to be no power. Um, so we'll do that one as well. And also a MacBook Air. Um, I think this one's no power. I haven't looked at it yet. It was just sent in. So um, these are the three that I'm going to go uh, through with you today. Um, and so you'll see on the bottom right, we have my scope camera, okay? And then you have me up here. Now, I don't have my hand camera set up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of tilt my main camera down like this. Uh, that way you can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm um, working down here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the um, iPad Air 2 and get these out of the way. Now, I haven't... Um, looked at any of these yet. I don't know if they're going to be easy. I don't know if they're going to be hard. Um, hopefully they're not hard um, as I don't want to look like an idiot on my first live stream. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do on the iPad Air 2 is we are going to plug it into the charger and see what we get. All right, so um, on my amp meter, it's pulling a little bit above an amp. Um, so that's normal. That's telling me that it is charging. Oh, it just dropped down to 300 milliamps and then back up to an amp and it's kind of going in that cycle it looks like. So um, going from an amp, dropping down to 300 milliamps, all the way up to an amp. So that's telling me that it, it's probably nothing in the charging circuit itself. Um, it's probably going to be a power issue or it might be in recovery or a DFU mode. Um, so what the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy TriStar tester. And I'm, I don't think it's a charging circuit issue, but I'm just gonna um, run this test just to be on the safe side. Again, just because it passes this test doesn't mean that TriStar and charging port are okay. It can only test for a certain amount of things. Um, but it is 100% accurate for the things that it tests for. Um, so let's go ahead and wait for this to run. I got the version one, I believe, of the TriStar tester. So it's like really slow. The new version takes like five seconds. To run through. Okay. And we have a pass. So as suspected, it's likely not going to be a charging circuit issue or anything like that. All right. So the next step is we're going to actually open up the iPad and the shop who sent this one actually opened it for me already because they love me and they, they just love me. So they don't make me open up the iPad. All right, so the the one thing I noticed is this stug, it's got a new battery in it. Okay, so it tells me the shops has already tried a battery. Now, one thing I do notice is the battery's not quite aligned properly. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to disconnect the battery and I'm gonna plug in a charger and I'm going to see if I get an Apple logo. Okay, so if I if I do that and I get an Apple logo, Likely the board is okay. Maybe the battery is just misaligned or something like that. Not be a really easy repair, but knowing my luck, that's not going to be the that's not going to be the case. All right. So now, how I disconnect the battery on these, and this is something that I think is kind of important for you guys to understand, is that uh, because I see the battery connector on these things damaged all the time because nobody pulls out the board to replace the battery. Why should they? It takes extra time. I understand that, but what you guys got to do is just be a little bit more careful. So how I do it is I take my spudger and onto the side of the um, battery connector, I kind of pry up. And I'm not trying to pry up too, too much, simply because if I do, then I could um, either have a thermal event because I'm using the battery as a lever kind of essentially, um, or I could damage the board. So what I'm gonna do is now you can't see. Okay, I'm trying to get this screen held up and me comfortable at the same time so I can show you guys. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is on the side here over here, and pick up a little bit and then we're going to slide a little anti-static bag underneath the battery connector and we got it there perfect and like i said now we're just going to plug in and see if we get an apple logo 
and nothing. So it's still pulling an amp, which is not what I would expect with no battery. Interesting, okay. So let's go ahead and remove the screen, see what we get. Oh man, my hand is shaking. This is gonna be fun trying to solder live. I don't know if you guys saw me at the micro soldering championship, but I looked like um, I had some type of disease that would not stop me from shaking. Jessa Jones was making fun of me. I mean, I still won, but it was like, I don't, I don't know how I won that with my hand shaking. So we're gonna see if I don't shake during a live video. All right, so we'll put the screen somewhere safe, right here. I'll throw these bottles of water away. All right, so what is next, you may ask. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see. Let's actually take my scope. I see a little bit of what may be liquid damage down here. This is where it touches on this iPad. So let's go ahead and pop that. Maybe if there's liquid damage down here, that would explain our issue. So we're going to gently pop this shield off. Maybe. Come on, come with me. There we go. All right, let's see what we have. I don't see anything that is gonna tell us that, hey, this iPad is liquid damage. That actually looks pretty good. I don't see anything there, it's dangerous. All right, so next step is we are going to probe main, see if main short, although with that current draw, I can already tell you it's not gonna be short, um, but I'm just gonna do this to be on the safe side. And then the next step after that is we're gonna go ahead and inject into main, even if it's not short, and then we're going to prompt to boot, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to tell us what the, the iPad is actually drawing through the battery connector um, uh, or the battery itself. You know, it, it, the draw through the charging port only tells, if it tells us if it's charging, right? Um, it doesn't tell us if the iPad is powering on normally. Now, I say that but there's a lot of people and that can actually look at the charging current draw and say, hey, that's got a short here and here. Um, and, and that just comes with experience. The more you work on these things, the, the more you'll be able to do that. So now that I have that main uh, shield off, we're gonna go ahead and probe for main. Now again, guys, I haven't, I haven't looked at these devices at all. I, um, I have just kind of took three out of my queue and said, I'm going to do a Facebook Live today and hopefully not look like an idiot. All right, so let's just kind of see the comments real quick. Where is CPR? <laughs> Nobody wants to see work. Uh, it's probably true. Um, the news is, yeah, it's here and there, you know. I'm going to do a news episode since things been happening um, and I've been interested in it, but I've just, I don't know. All right, so. Um, somebody asked what's main and it's somebody who I know knows exactly what main is, but that is a great question. Um, main is, is let me put the camera back up here. All right. So main is essentially the main power rail through any iPad and any, um, iPhone. Okay. So essentially how I like to describe it is if you have a tree, the main would be the main tree trunk. Okay. And uh, all the branches would be your other power rails that you have on the device. Right. So, um, if main goes short, you know, that's, there's no tree trunk, you know, that's, nothing can happen. So it's going to be completely dead. Kind of what we see here, but we don't see that exactly because we do see charging. If on main short on an iPad, I would expect like a 500 milliamp short or a 500 milliamp draw constant, not booting up to an amp and then going back down to like 300 milliamp. But actually, I don't, can't remember the last time I saw that or even if I have seen that before. So um, let's go ahead and check main here. Um, this big cap here, oh, that is not even close to in focus for you guys. There we go. Okay, so this cap more than likely is main because it's a big cap. Um, now we can always confirm if we use ZXW, but we're just gonna go ahead and assume that that's right. Wow, what? Main is short with that current draw. Okay, all right, so we have a main short. Um, and what we are going to do is actually I'm going to hop over to ZXW so we can confirm that that is the right, that it is main like I'm assuming it's main. Just because I said it's main doesn't mean it's main. I could be a liar, look at me, I'm ginger. So you don't know. So let's confirm 
and we are going to open up ZXW. You'll see I just had it open and I closed it. That was open from last night. Um, ZXW will never work the next day if you leave it open. So you got to close it and reopen it. And don't update. I'm trying to do a live. You guys are killing me. Come on now. Go away. Sorry, guys. You'll have to be patient with me during these difficult times of the computer. I don't think it can handle, no, postpone for sure. Uh, I don't think it can handle streaming, doing um, ZXW, and working cameras, I guess. I don't know. Damn, M1s. Any day now. There we go. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. And again, what we're doing here is we are just confirming that this is a main shorts. Um, this line here, I'm um, not sure if you guys can see. Um, but this line on the uh, this cap right here is short. So we are confirming that it's main. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow, I can't believe main shorts, main shorts pulling over an amp. I don't think I've ever seen that before. All right, so we are in a pad air, a pad air two. And it's Wi-Fi. Not that the Wi-Fi and 4G is going to really make a difference, but. And it is main. Now, on this board view, you, it doesn't actually name it, okay? But what I'm doing to confirm that it's main is I'm looking at how, um, the, what it's attached to, right? I know main is part of the PMIC. Wi-Fi is a dead giveaway. It has main on it and some, some stuff down here. So kind of it's how it's spread everywhere. I'm assuming it's main, even though... Um, ZXW doesn't actually tell me it's main. So you may ask, what is the next step? The next step is actually um, pretty simple. Uh, let's go ahead and switch the view back to me. Where is OBS? Okay, so to identify main um, or where the main short is, is normally pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to inject voltages. Okay, so oh, my camera's like all the way up here. Sorry with this camera work, guys. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna turn on our um, DC power supply, get that up and ready. We we have a couple of different ways we could do this. We could use the thermal cam along, oh, come on, get off their iPad, along with the uh, Jesse Cruz's stand that makes life easier. Um, and the, 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 the lens, the macro lens. That is, I mean, it's worth the money in itself. If you have this thermal camera and don't have that lens, I, I, I did it for like a year and I barely used the thermal camera. I hated it so much. And now I got that lens. I use it almost every time for a short. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use that lens um, or the, the thermal camera. And I'm going to figure out how I can show you what the thermal camera shows while streaming. Um, let's see here. All right, first, uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually connecting my DCPS to my uh, probes so I can inject the voltage. And normally right now I'm listening to a little bit of Taylor Swift and Tay Tay talking about I'm listening to some music. No, just, you know, y'all got not a fan of Tay Tay? All right, let's see. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to, you can barely see my DC power supply over here. Um, I'm going to turn it up to four, four volt, ah, three volts would be fine. And 1.9 amps is fine. And then the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on that line that I'm using. All right, and now I'm gonna touch my two probes together and I'm going to confirm that on the DCPS, it actually showed that it was pulling current and you can't see it because of my awful camera work, but I can see it. So we're going to do what Lewis Rossman says is the trust based DC power supply. You're going to have to trust what I'm telling you. It's pulling. All right. And now I am going to go ahead and inject right into main. I'm going to see what I get and I get pretty much as much current as I will allow. So everything that I'm trying to inject is going into the iPad. Now on a normal iPad with with no battery connected, if I inject it into main, it would be nothing. Nothing would happen, right? 
And then if I hit the power button, or as known as prompt to boot, uh, then I would get some current drawing, some stuff happening, right? Um, but in this case, I, when I inject the voltage, I'm getting 1.9 amps, which is what my DC power supply is set to before I even do anything. So that says, hey, all that electricity is going to ground. That's not good. That's how we identify, or that's how we know it's a short. Um, and then the next step here, of course, is going to be to um, to check use our thermal camera. So we are going to allow now. Let's see if how this is going to work. Let's see if I can tip this down more. Okay, you can kind of see my phone. That's gonna have to work. All right, now we're gonna make this adjust so I can actually see individual components. Now, if I didn't have the macro lens, um, I would not actually be able to see individual components. It would just be a blur and I could see like something getting warm. All right, but now you can kind of see how I'm, you can kind of see the individual components. They're not the best, but you can still see them. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to inject and I don't see anything getting hot. Nothing is popping out at me. Good, so now we're just gonna kinda, well, let's move up down here since we saw what well, looked like maybe in liquid damage. Um, let's see if anything's getting hot down here. No, nothing getting hot down there. We will move up. And here's the PMIC. We are gonna pray that that's not short because nobody wants to pay for a PMIC. Oh, did you see? Something's getting warm over here. Let's go down. Boop. Oh, look at that cap, and it's barely getting warm. You see it, though? You see, yeah, I, I can see that you can see it. It's flashing as I'm pushing power on it and not, right? So that is gonna be, that bad cap is gonna be our issue. Very nice, I like easy repairs, especially when I'm on live, very nice. I was worried about it's gonna look dumb. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Next up, we are actually going to see if we can visually inspect what cap that was. Normally what I would do is kind of like put my um, my spudger or something down on top of what was lighting up there so I could identify it. Uh, but today, since we're on live, I'm gonna use a little bit of free spray or I'm gonna see if I can visually inspect which cap it was, see if any of them on the bottom look bad. And I don't, they all look pretty good. They all look visually okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of freeze spray. Actually, we're gonna get co um, compressed air and just tip that can upside down because I'm cheap and I don't like to buy the free spray. And now I'm using gloves when I do this because, well, you should always use gloves when you do repairs, but um, I'm doing it because this, when you hold that canned air upside down and use it as freeze spray, there's such a nasty bitterant that's added to it, and it, it's just, it's so gross um, to be in your mouth. Um, all right, so now we have the gloves on, we got the freeze spray, and we are going to freeze. All right, a little bit more. All right, now we're gonna try to act quickly. We are going to What? The free spray might not. My, oh, there it is, right there. You saw it? You saw it? All right, so it was this cap here that was giving us the issue. Now, we'll clean this up. Oop. Dry all that off. Now, what do we do next, right? What is the next step? We just tear that bitch off. We don't need that cap, it's a main cap. There's plenty of those. We just take our blade, bam! Get out of here, main cap, bad cap. All right, let's get our tweezers. And we will just take that right off. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we could put it all back together and test, or we can take our multimeter probes off the DC power supply I always try to shut my DC power supply off because a lot of times I will forget to unplug them and then sometimes, I'm not gonna admit this openly, but I will inject voltage when I'm trying to probe. <laughs> All right, so now our multimeter probes are back on the uh, multimeter and we can go ahead and probe the main cap again. And we have the sweet sound of silence. 
no shorts, right? So this is the sound of a short over here. Bad, bad, bad. And good, 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 right? So we should be good to go. This iPad should be repaired. What we are going to do next is go ahead and pop on the screen. Where did I put that screen? Right here. Okay. And I'm like doing all of this backwards because my camera's over here. Normally I'm like have everything going this way. But we are gonna try to do this backwards and see if I can get away with it. Okay, so uh, we will connect our battery. All right, now this might just turn on uh, the way it is. I doubt the battery is going to be completely depleted, but now we're actually getting kind of what we would expect. Well, hold on. Let for hey, Apple logo. Hey, look at that. Busy looking at the charging current. Let's see the Apple logo. Let's see. It's kind of it's at 500 right now. It's slowly building up. There it is. There's 1.5 amps. That's what we like to see on a normal working iPad. And it works. Touch works. Yay. All right. That is a working iPad. Now let's go ahead, actually, let's just move through the queue. I'm not gonna put this back together right now. We'll just take this screw set and we will put this over here for me to work on later to put all back together. All right, so what do we have next? We have that MacBook and the iPhone 11. Now I have a feeling I'm gonna have to restore that iPhone 11. So let's do that first so we can fix this one and then we'll work on the iMac why or the macbook while we we're restoring this phone to see if we fixed it because now why are we gonna have to restore this phone um because it has a baseband issue and this is kind of something i wanted to talk about and it is something that i almost everybody that doesn't do board level work does but when it says hey you know you need an update to use your cellular update it now a lot of people will restore the phone Okay, and what happens is if you restore the phone while it's in that condition, it will brick it. It, it. Essentially, it will keep it locked up on your activation screen. And just to show you what happens, go through here, connect my Wi-Fi real quick. I'm sorry, I really didn't do any prep work. To, should have had all these devices ready to go, but nope. All right, so you'll see, it says unable to activate and update is required, shut down. This is what happens if you restore your device when it has a baseband issue, okay? Whenever it says you need an update to, to use your cellular, that's never a software problem. It's always a board level issue, okay? Now, another way we can confirm is you'll see it doesn't have any IMEI on the, if you hit the little I at the bottom, it just shows the serial number. This is a baseband issue, okay? Now, because it's already been restored, if I fix it, and then put it all back together, it's still gonna be in the same condition because I have to restore it again in order for it to work after I fixed baseband. Okay, so it, it just takes extra time. So whenever they come like this, like I saw this one, it's just like, all right, I'm gonna have to restore it after I do the repair. And it's, a, it's kind of a pain because essentially you have to restore every, like after every attempt repair. Let's say I didn't fix it the first time, I have to go back and redo the repair. I have, after I think I fixed it the second time, I gotta do another restore. So it's kind of a pain in that way, but not horrible. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This is definitely gonna be uh, a sandwich issue or you know, baseband CPU or baseband PMIC. It's gonna be something um, that I'm gonna have to split the sandwich for. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll try to diagnose it without actually splitting the sandwich, but on a baseband issue, that's not gonna happen. I'm definitely gonna have to split it. So we will go ahead and get started on that now. Let me just open up this device really quick. Oh, just drop my screwdriver. Yeah, this is, my hands are shaking pretty bad. I don't know how this is gonna work, but we will see. Ba -da -ba 
da, 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 da. All right, sorry for you guys don't want to see my face while I'm doing this. Just boop. There we go. Uh, Bam. All right. Looks like I'm actually the first one to open this phone all together. And so, of course, the first step is to disconnect the battery. And now we'll just remove the rest of these right here. Alright. Alright, screen's off. Make progress. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing this because uh, Jesse actually is getting so much ahead of me in the subscriber popularity contest. I can't have that happen, so I'm just going to go live. Let's see. No SIM card in it. Good. You know, when the 11 first came out, I was like, how ridiculous is it? I gotta take the SIM tray out in order to get the board out. And then the freaking 12s and 13s came out where I gotta take the battery out. And I'm like, Jesus, Apple, getting so ridiculous with this. We're gonna repair your phones no matter what. So you might as well just make it easier on us. All right, got this bracket up here to get rid of. Come on. Come on out. There we go. Bam. All right. Board is out. <laughs> All right. So next step here is we are going to remove these uh, little foam things because they we are going to put the board on the board heater and these things kind of look nasty when they get hot, so we're going to take them off. Now, excuse my shaking, I'm nervous because CPRST, y'all a bunch of assholes. You're just waiting for me to mess up so you can make fun of me. I know it, all right? So I'm a little nervous that I don't mess up, but if I mess up, I'll be able to fix it, hopefully. Unless, you know, I float CP or something stupid like that. All right, now we got all the little film things off. Just confirm, yeah, they're all gone. Okay, now we're gonna put it on our board heater. Okay, and now what I do is I take one of the screws, I don't know if this one will work, and I put it, in one of the standoffs. Yeah, wrong. That screw's not going to work. Mm, pull one of these in right here. All right, and I put it in one of the standoffs. Now I do that so when the board gets to temperature, um, I can just take my tweezers and pull on that screw and pull the top board off, right? It's very simple, very easy to do. And let's go ahead and grab our power for the board here. This is this thing right here. Oh, come on. 
All right, and we will turn this on. And now we're just gonna wait a minute until that gets up to temperature and ready to remove. And while we wait a minute, I'm gonna look at the comments, see who's making fun of me. All right. Every awkward silence, you know. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what to talk about in this blank time of waiting for this board to heat up. Um, we could talk about, um, what do you guys want to talk about? All 10 of you. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just nudging the board to see, or the top board to see if it if it's loose at all. And what that does is it just tells me, you know, obviously if it's ready to separate, right? If it's not budging, it's not ready to separate. If it's moving around, it's ready to go. Pretty simple, straightforward. Now on the 12 and 13s, what I would do is I would use my board heater and my uh, hot air. Uh, I would use them both essentially because the, the 12 and the 13s, they have a much higher uh, melting point to split that board. So just using the board heater itself, or at least this particular board heater, it, it isn't really safe. You know, you're, you're definitely going to have some issues with that um, as I've had in the past. see now no still she is still not ready well she's actually very close very very close I think she's ready now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two tweezers right and I'm gonna have one tweezer kind of hold the bottom board and I'm gonna have my second pair of tweezers grab that screw that I put in and just like that and then flip the board over like that okay now we do not see any damaged pads now shut off her board here so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take um, uh, to, go the, um, to talk about what Raheem just said. That's a very good point, but who the hell calibrates their... No, I'm just kidding. No, he, he's absolutely right. I mean, if the board heater can't get to a certain temperature, then obviously it's not going to do any damage. Um, but I'm kind of... The way I do it is I, I haven't even calibrated any board heater. What I do is I just kind of turn it on and know when it gets to that point. And once it's at that point where it's ready to separate, then I, I just separate it, you know? Um, but yeah, he has a, a very good point where um, it will not. So, uh, damn, I was kind of hoping to see damaged pads and I, so let's see what we see here. This is the top board. Um, I don't see anything damaged. This is disappointing. I was really kind of wanting to show off my pad rebuilding skills. Um, and the one thing I'm checking on the iPhone 11, if it's not the, a sandwich or it's not, this piece right here is normally cracked or an issue. So we're gonna keep an eye out for that. Um, and I'm really just kind of looking for anything uh, that's obviously bad. Let's see, I'm just gonna kind of clean off baseband CPU. And baseband CPU doesn't look like it has any damage done to it, which is good. Yesterday I was working on a 12 mini and I got halfway through the board swap before I realized that damn baseband was cracked, uh, which was embarrassing to go through that repair. But I don't see anything damaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, how do I want to do this? I guess I could just put this in the jig and start a restore and then we'll hop over to the MacBook. And we'll wait for that to restore and see what we get after that. Uh, I really don't like the jig. Uh, you know, up until the, the 11 series, the jig has been like a godsend where it was 100%. But this damn 12 series jig I have, and it's not just me, it's every uh, everybody I talk to with it, but it's so unreliable where half the time it works, half the time it doesn't work. 
But the 11 has been pretty solid for me, up except for a couple of days ago where it was showing me Wi-Fi wasn't working right. But that's a story for another time. So this is the jig. This is um, essentially what bo us board guys use to take the two sandwiches and to put them together. So what we will do is we will put the bottom board in here like this. And then we have this little little white piece and that acts as like the the interposer essentially where you'll see this has a bunch of little pins on it that connect all the important pads from the bottom board to the top board right so we're going to just put that in the middle and then we will put the top board on now we're going to need a couple of things for this to work right so we're going to restore it as is just like this um, but we need a DC, we need power for the board and we need a charging port, right? Those are the only two things that I need to restore. I'm not going to put a screen on it or anything right now. Um, I'm just going to simply connect power and connect it to my computer and then restore it. So let's get this out of the way really quick. All right. And here's my PC that I use for restoring. And I believe... I should have a charging port already out of the housing. So let's double check. Of course your battery's low, it always is. Ah, oh, perfect, iPhone 11 charging port right here. Just need one of you. Go back in the hole. All right. All right, so here's the charging port. Get that connected. Perfect. All right, so we have that. And now we just need some power. So we are going to use the DC power supply to give it some power. We are not going to use a battery just because it's a little easier that way. Right, and this is what I use here to, to connect it. So we'll connect this to our DC power supply, make sure our DC power supply is on 4.3 volts, and it is, and I think, uh, yes, I already have the 11 connected to it. So right here, plug that in. Perfect. And I guess I should plug in this PC before it dies on me as well. Yeah, this is, I kind of just woke up and was like, I'm going to do a live stream today because people have been wondering where I'm at. And I'm right here. Just been working and not doing the news. disconnected come on there we go all right so we're gonna turn this back on we will connect here and since the phone's not already activated I don't need to do any trust or anything like that for it to connect to my PC so once it turns on it will go ahead and register and we will work on the MacBook while we wait for that to restore All right, so now we have the MacBook Air. This is the last device that we have. Um, I'm sure we'll still need to do something on that 11 after it's done. Still not registering, what the heck? I would expect it to be on by now. Oh, there it goes, okay. All right, so now we will do Smart Flash. And of course I don't have the software downloaded for it either. Wow, I'm just a mess today, okay. So this MacBook Air, I am not exactly sure um, what's wrong with it. I'm hoping it's no power because a no power would be, I think, more fun to watch than, let's say, no backlight. If it's something like no backlight, 
there's really even no diagnostic to that or anything like that it's on this macbook air if it's no backlight it's literally the backlight driver and a jumper that you have to lay and maybe a fuse or blue maybe i doubt it though macbooks don't know how to blow fuses okay all right so we have a green light that's good and now we have an orange light that's good and let's see can't really tell anything else on newer macbooks you can see if you have trackpad feedback but this one clicks all the time so you can't use that i don't see any image popping up so it's probably not a no power situation but what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and open it up and it looks like somebody just left the bottom screws out which is fine with me so the next step is we're going to disconnect the battery we are going to visually inspect and look for any liquid okay um i don't see any so but you would never see it on the top side of the board anyway well, i mean that's not true never but so now we're gonna plug it in and what i'm looking for now is fan spin right and i don't have it so this unit is for sure a no power so perfect let me go ahead and start disassembling this really quick helpful if I put the right tip on somebody should tag repair babe and let her know how repair video is done just kidding I think that's it for the ribbons down near. All right, just take the Wi-Fi connectors off. So, here is what we got. MacBook Air, this is an 00165 board. It is my favorite board to work on because it is literally the easiest board to work on. If you're trying to learn how to do MacBook repairs, I highly, highly recommend you start on this particular board because there's very, very few things that this board cannot come back from. I have seen this particular board be literally soaked in liquid from top to bottom where it looked like everything had been hit and I threw that bitch in the ultrasonic cleaner and it worked when it came out. I mean, <laughs> these boards, I, I wish Apple would make them all like this, okay? So the first, very first step is debatable. It could be either on this particular board anyway. It could be visually inspect the board to see if you see anything damaged from liquid, which is normally the cause if you have one of these boards in for no power or the next first step could be to check PP bus G3 hot because if there's no, no liquid on this board that this board has a signature issue where one of these big caps on the, the on PP bus short out and it, it happens so so frequently but I'm gonna do visual inspection because I can already tell you I just saw liquid on the back when I was pulling out the board so let's take a look at that oh wow okay so it's kind of limited it looks like you can see the liquid here um let's try to get this in focus for you that that looks like it's going to be the extent of the liquid in this little area um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of skim the rest of the board to make sure nothing else got hit but that's kind of common with this model is that's where the liquid hits it hits like right in this area sometimes over here on top of the smc um sorry the u tools wants to mess up hold on i now way we can hop back to this iphone 11 when it's ready sorry guys
All right, there, now it's downloading again. Cool. Um, all right, so back to our visual inspection. Everything else seems to be pretty good on this board. I don't see any other liquid anywhere. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna clean up. So what we have here is we have the uh, SPI, that's the BIOS, right? We have the power good circuit, which is over here. Um, I don't exactly remember off the top of my head what this is. Uh, but yeah, this is all gonna have to be cleaned up. So I think we're gonna get pretty lucky in the sense of this damage just being in this area. All right, so we're more than likely gonna have to replace a couple of things over here. Um, some of this is just gonna be able to be cleaned up, really, it's not gonna have to be replaced. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. Now I'm being kind of rough with it. Okay, and the reason I'm being rough is because I want, if anything's barely holding on, I want that just to fall off, right? I don't want it to stay there. So now we got our cleaning going on, and you see how, oop, look, something fell off right here. That's good. You see, and, and, and let me show you something here. You see how the bottom pad is, is kind of silverish? That means that that component was probably making really good contact there, right? It, 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 it was probably connected. Now, the, the pad above it though, this one here, you see how it's dark and everything? That tells me that that component wasn't making good contact. So that right there is one reason that this computer is not gonna work. So we're gonna address that here in a minute. Well, we're, first we're gonna kind of finish cleaning up everything and seeing if we can get anything else to get knocked off here. Uh, so those seem pretty steady. This chip will probably have to be replaced as it always has to be replaced every time there's liquid damage in this area. And... All right. I'm thinking this is gonna be an issue over here. I'm gonna have to replace this. So this is gonna have to be replaced and maybe this one and probably this one and that one looks okay but if it doesn't work after we're done we'll go back to that um all right so let's go ahead and get started let's go ahead and remove that off let's see where we're right here Now I'm removing this and expecting more pads that look damaged underneath. Yeah, look at that. That one's completely damaged underneath it. And this is why we remove chips when we have suspicions that liquid hit it. So you see this pad here is damaged and this pad right here is damaged, right? More than likely a jumper is gonna have to be laying right there or yeah, laying right there to get this unit to work properly. So we'll go back to that in a minute. And now I wanna take a look. I wanna take a look here, but I don't know if I have faith that that's bad. We'll come back to that if it doesn't work. Next one I'm gonna remove is this one here. I have a, a big suspicion that this is gonna be an issue. Wow, all those pads look good underneath. Do I see any? Yeah, so it looks like the chip itself had some damaged pads up here. I might be able to reuse that chip, we'll see. Um, all right, so now we have a couple of resistors that look darkened. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check them real quick. And again, this just comes out of experience, but those are SPI resistors. So they're either gonna be like 15, 25, or 40 something. Uh, that kind of jumps around between them. So if I have that, then I'll know it's good. Still kind of warm. Yeah, it's 43, that one's gonna be good. This one's a little darker. Let's see. Yeah, that one's bad. Okay, so we're gonna change that one too. Get this out of here. Come on. 
break free. Oh, look, bad pad underneath that, and that is why we check things. Look at that. Another damaged pad. All right. So now we kind of found our main issues with it. Now we go ahead and clean up here. So let's start here and kind of see what we can do with this. Turn on our iron. Get some flux over here. That's a little bit of flux. And of course we're gonna need some fresh solder. Bam, all right. So, get that cleaned up. Now you can kind of more easily see, I guess, the, uh, the damage here that I was referring to. Now, in reality, we may be able to scrape that and bring those pads back, so let's check. Get our uh, X-Acto knife here. Sometimes we're able to save them by scraping. Mm. All right, so let's see what we get. And then we're gonna check the measurements on that line. I'm checking the measurements to see if it's ground, if I've hit the ground layer and I have not good. That is a good measurement. And this one's not, so we have uh, probably uh, a damage just from right here to the, the trace and not on this pad itself. So I'm gonna try to clean this pad a little bit more because I think that is gonna be a good pad to use, just a little oxidized. Just a little oxidized. And again, we're just checking it for ground to make sure I didn't hit the ground plane. Oh, look at that, and perfect. All right, so that actually is saved. So we will not have to lay a jumper. And we're just gonna add some flux and some solder to those points. And we, may, we still may have to add a jumper. Uh, that's looking good. That should be enough solder to hold that. All right. Good enough. That's going to be good enough. All right. So now what we need to do is go grab a donor board from our never ending supply of these donors. Let's see, does this one have the chips I need? Yeah, it's got one of them anyway. All right. So we will start. This is the donor board. I know it looks gross. All right, so it looks like we're gonna remove this capacitor first. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I, th I do this so I, I can kind of conserve flux. As I heat the board first, right? And then I just, it, with the board hot, the flux immediately melts as it touches. See, just like that. So I can use very little flux and try to keep the board as clean as possible. And we'll let surface tension put that, oop, come on, go back, there we go. All right, and now we're gonna need that chip. Perfect. And again, warm up the board a little bit. And now we're gonna heat. We're gonna wait for some of that to melt and then perfect just like that. And now you saw it jump in place. And now what I'm gonna do, since it's not a BGA, is I'm gonna press on it 
and then heat it again. You see how all those balls flew out? That's perfect. That's what we wanted. And now we're going to clean it up a little bit. Bam. Just like that. Like it was never liquid damaged, right? Like it was never hurt in the past. All right. So that should be good now. Now we're going to move along to over here. Now I'm Gonna look at this resistor again. I don't know if that pad's damaged underneath, but we're just that's one of those things we're just gonna kind of mark with our mind and keep in mind, like, hey, that might be an issue that we're gonna have to go back on. And so now for this one, since it's a bigger chip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wick. I'm gonna wick all that other solder off of there and then put fresh solder on. Bam, looks good. Now the reason I do that is mainly because I like to use just the solder that I have um, here instead of like mixing the two. But another reason is that um, I like to see, oh, and this it happened perfect. <coughs> Excuse me, it happened perfect. If I wick it and the pad is barely hanging on, what will happen is the, the pad will actually kind of the damage itself, right? So I know that me wicking the pad isn't damaging it. But I know if I get a pad and it comes off and it looks like this, that is a pad that is damaged, right? Now, we're kind of lucky on this one because it's still picking up a reading, okay? And this one is too. Good. But I could kind of clean and scrape that a little bit and, and try to make that a little better, make it a little have a, a better contact here. Let's see if that will help me at all. Yeah, see, I'm just kind of scraping away the oxidization. Do the same for this one. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some fresh solder. First we hit the flux, and then the solder. All right, so here's our solder. Boop, boop, boop. All right, and then the middle, just like that. And now we pull from our donor again, which doesn't have that chip. I'm not surprised, because that chip constantly gets wet, and I constantly have to uh, flash this iPhone 11 real quick so we can get back to that next. And of course, no free disk space. All right, where is you tool? Let's delete some of these old ones. All right, let's try this flash again. Flash. There we go. Okay, now to find another donor for the MacBook. Does this one have the chip that we need? No, it does not. Damn, I hope I can find one of those chips because that does go bad often. Nope, that one doesn't have it either. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Hopefully one of these will have it. Ah, yes, this one has it. Perfect. All right. There it is. And it also has that resistor I need. So this one would be the one I'm using. Um, to read the comments real quick, what wick do I use? I use Goot Wick 1.5 in width, and it is the by far the best wick I have ever used. And Jacob, yes, it is early. I did it early so people on the um, West Coast couldn't see because, you know, fuck the West Coast. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Come on, break free, break free. There we go. All right, go away, donor. And now that's a little melted, we just set it there and let it let it do its own job. I might have to push a little bit to get it. Yeah, there we go. Like get it up there. Perfect. Surface tension worked. 
Now I'm bringing away my heat, waiting for it to dry, and just gonna put the thing, uh, the tweezers on top of it, press down a little bit, add more heat to let those solder balls fly out, perfect. And now we do like we just did before, we clean it up a little bit, make it look good. Boop. Bam, like it's never been let wet, right? And we will clean all of our flux. Why do we clean our flux? Because if we don't clean our flux, what will happen is that uh, you will get the device back five months later and it will look like it's been liquid damaged from your flux because it will eat away. And it looks like crap. So I always try to clean everything I can. All right, now what we are gonna do is we are going to see if we can deal with this damaged pad and resistor down here. And we're gonna to try to do the same thing that we just did before on the other one. We're gonna to try to scrape away a little bit. See if we can get to the bottom. And no, that one looks like it's gonna be pretty damaged. All right, so now we'll, what do we do? How do we figure out where that went? Easy, easy peasy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to the screen and we're gonna open up board view, flex board view. This is a fantastic software. If you work on a lot of MacBooks, it just makes your life so much easier. Um, you can see it has the schematics here and you can jump between them very easily. So now let's go ahead and look where we're working, which is right here. And the line that's got the damaged pad is PP3V3S5. S5 is a power rail. It is one of the earlier power rails, something that should be present very early. And it also looks like it comes up to here on this chip. Let's see, is there any other way we can pull it? No, that chip's probably gonna be the best way. So we are gonna have to lay a jumper from the, the point two on this um, chip, this IC, down to this resistor. So what we're gonna do is, jump back over to OBS and me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is if you look at the board itself, now you'll notice the board view didn't show it, but if you look at the board itself, you can see all right, so the second pad down is this one, and you can see this, this trace here. So instead of trying to put a wire all the way up next to this chip, I'm just gonna cut away the kind of the mask or the uh, whatever you wanna call it, the top layer of the board, just to get to that trace and lay a jumper from here down to this resistor. But first, I am actually gonna just install a resistor. So we'll add some flux there first, and we will pull our resistor from our donor here. Beautiful. All right. So now I'm gonna put the resistor backwards. Okay, you see how I did that? Oh no, that's not even close on there all the way. Oh man, I that's my shaking right there getting to me. Come on now, this is ridiculous. Wow. All right, I'm just gonna put it the regular way. That was embarrassing. Can't even put on a resistor, Ginger. That's bad. No, we're gonna need more flux to kind of make that the way I want it, and we're gonna flip it, flip it, flip it. There we go. Now the reason I flipped it over is just so it's easier to the iPhone failed to restore at 60%. Why did you do that? Let's try that again. That normally means a sandwich issue, but it's in the jig. So could have interposer issues on the 11. Um, that's gonna be fun to figure out. Or it could be my jig that's messing with me. Um, the jig sucks. I hate the jigs, but nobody listens to me. All right, going back to this MacBook, the things that can actually be fixed. All right, we're gonna. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up 
a little bit over here so I can scrape away easier and see what I'm scraping at. Right? Where's my blade? Here it is. So, again, pen two is right there, so we're just going to kind of scrape. Scraping away my love for you. Bam, that will be plenty. And now we are going to add a little bit of flux right here and here. And we're gonna get our jumper wire to jump the electricity. I'm sorry guys, I, I'm the worst when it comes to awkward silences. I just start saying things. All right, so now we're gonna very lightly, so we don't, cause we don't want the resistor to jump off the other pad. That's on there, perfect. And then we're gonna go over here. And just like that. Bam. Got that jumper laid. Mm -mm -mm. Like it was never wet. Uh, I'm thinking those are no stuff, those two resistors. Let me double check with this donor yeah those are no stuff okay and while well, I was just double checking that these two here were no stuff I'm, I was pretty sure they were but I always like to confirm all right so now we're gonna get our UV our UV glue or not UV glue but UV mask and put a little bit of that on that jumper wire Perfect. All right, now we gotta cure it. So I use my UV light and I got that Quan Lee UV light, but it stopped charging like a week after I got it. So I, I rigged it up just to connect it to a DC power supply because I'm a loser. Um, but now it works great. You just have to charge it with the DC power supply. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. All right, so now that is jumped, we are gonna do just take a, uh, a quick, another visual inspection. We're gonna check a few things, make sure the other resistors that kind of look dark in there are okay. All right, and my first one that I, I really want to look at is this one here. Um, I have my suspicions. I have my suspicions that it's bad. So we are going to go to the, the board view real quick, and I am just going to check. Yeah, okay, so these two. So what I'm doing here is I am, I'm going to take a measurement on pin two of this resistor, okay, and also pin two, or I'm gonna try to do it from the SPI or pad three of the SPI. The reason I'm doing this is because I do not want to know if the resistor itself is working. I want to know if there's any damage traces between, um, you know, between pin, this resistor and the SPI. Okay, so that's the best way to check is that don't check the resistor itself, but check what goes before the resistor and what goes after the resistor. Right, and also somebody would people would tell you if they're smart not to check resistors while they're in circuit because you could get a bad reading. That's 100% true. You could definitely get a bad reading while checking a resistor while it's in circuit, but it doesn't matter because 90% of the time it's correct. And even when it's not correct, you can compare it to a known good or another donor and see if you still have that bad reading. So I always check them in circuit and. I don't care what anybody else says. So now we are going to choke and make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. OBS, where are you? All right, so I am going to check from pin two to pad three. 
And what do I get? I get the 45 I was expecting, 45 ohms. Look at this random solder ball right here. This is Apple's work. What in the world? Get, get, go away, get that out of there. All right, do I see anything else? Now remember, here we're gonna look at if it doesn't work. All right, we're gonna take a look at that. This we already replaced. And we're gonna look at this if it doesn't work because that's also known to go bad. And let's check this other resistor here. Again, I'm checking before the resistor and after the resistor. And I have 0.4. Is that normal for that resistor? Let's go ahead and check our board view software. And where was it? What resistor was that? The one right here. And we're gonna search for the schematic for it. And at right click and search, and you will see the schematic says it is a zero ohm resistor. So it's like a jumper. And that is the reading that I got. So that is good. And you know what guys, I think it is time to turn it on. I think it's time to, to at least give it a shot. I'm just clicking random things all over the place now. There we go. Give it a shot to turn it on. Let's see. So. We're gonna, we already have the fan, and how we're gonna know if it's working is if we get fan spin. And I should have, yes, one of these for the I.O. board. And I think I have an I.O. board just sitting out around here somewhere. All right, um, update on the iPhone 11. It did get through past 60%, so it looks like the restore is gonna go successful this time. I'm not sure exactly what happened last time. Um, Where's my I.O. board? I know I had some just laying around somewhere. All right, fine. I will pull another one. Stand by while I look for my I.O. board or one of them anyway. There we go. That one will work. All right. So we're going to plug this in now. And I know you guys can't see it very well, but what I'm gonna be doing now is checking for fan spin. And even if we get, get fan spin, it doesn't mean it's working because the area that was hit is the SPI. And that, if that's not working or the SPI is not working properly, it'll actually boot, but the uh, or fan will spin, but it won't post. Fingers crossed for fan spin. Fingers crossed for fan spin. Fan spin, yay! Looks like we fixed the MacBook, all right. So now what we're gonna do is put that aside. We're gonna grab the client's housing. And look, this restore might be finished right as we're finishing this MacBook. That way we can move right along. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to clean this the, this corrosion right here off the keyboard just because I'm gonna uh, like to be perfect. But, and we will put this back in here. Come on, come on. All right, I'm just gonna put um, a screw in here so it doesn't fall out while we're testing everything. You can tell by the way I walk and the way I am. I'm a family man. Mm -mm. Sorry, guys. My wife tells me I'm the worst singer in the world, but I love to sing. All right. So now we have everything critical hooked up, really. I guess we could hook up Wi-Fi, too, since we're testing everything. But well, hey, sometimes I, I'm so confident with myself, I will just put the entire MacBook back together and then try to turn it on, it doesn't work. All right, so now what do we have? We need the battery. We don't need the battery, but we're testing everything. Every MacBook will turn on without the battery, at least somewhat turn on, right? It might be running slow, it might have some issues, but it will turn on. So when you guys send me MacBooks for no power, and the battery gets replaced, it's one of my pet peeves. I'm like, you didn't have to replace the battery. You could have just plugged it in with the right charger, recommend a 96 watt or an 80 something for the MagSafe 2, and we're gonna plug in the battery. Now we're gonna test. All right, so I'm gonna put this like this so you guys can see. Hopefully we will get an Apple logo.
praying for an Apple logo, praying for an Apple logo. That's a post, that's good. We should have Apple logo, there it is. Yes, we have a working MacBook, fantastic. It could be the reason it's taking so long is it's probably booting into a uh, recovery and the, it takes longer and why, why it ha that happens is if you turn it off and on a bunch of times <coughs> it will just automatically boot into recovery and so we're just gonna wait for it to boot all the way and then we're gonna restart it and it should boot back into normal mode I, I can tell um, that this is it's not gonna be a sensor issue you know if it boots slow like this and it boots into the normal um the the normal login screen that could be a sensor issue because it's taking so long but that's not going to be an issue here because my fan is spinning but it's spinning at a normal a normal pace it's not it's not like like an airplane so the sensors are going to be okay and it's going to be booting into recovery i can almost guarantee it with this long now if we didn't want to wait and we were impatient what we could do is just turn it back off and do a pram reset real quick and then that will uh that will boot it right back into the login screen but uh we're patient you know we got time we're waiting for this iphone 11 restore to go through um and we're gonna pray that that iphone 11 has base fan because there was no torn pads and i don't want to do real diagnostic uh on that iphone 11 right now Okay, I'm about to do a PRAM reset because I'm impatient. All right, so as promised, command option PR, we'll do a PRAM reset just to get this back to the login screen. All right, that's one post. We're going to continue to hold until we get to three. That's two. And we can look at now the third one's gonna happen. All right, now we hope that it goes to the login screen. Otherwise, we're gonna have to pull this board back out and figure out what's going on. Nope, there it is, perfect, just like that. All right, and let's see, do we see battery? We do see the battery, so that's good to go. It is at 0%, so it is, you know, that's kind of normal for when they've been like liquid damaged after a while, the battery just drains and they're at 0%, and it takes probably like five to 10 minutes for it to, to start to charge normally. So I guess since we're this phone is still at 91%, um, we can go ahead and just quickly put this MacBook back together now and uh, that'll save me some time a little bit later. So, um, sorry for the boring in between of putting together and taking apart these devices. All right, flash is complete. We will give that another few minutes to go through its secondary thing with the Apple logo before I turn it off and connect a screen to see if we have baseband in the jig. I don't have too high of hopes. I didn't see anything damaged on those pads or anything like that to think that it was a sandwich issue. So hopefully it will be repairable. Repairable, repairable. 
All right. All right. So let's go ahead. I'll just turn this off. I don't care. Connect the screen. I gotta connect the power. That would be helpful if you connect the battery or the, the battery simulator is known as the DC power supply. All right, so that's plugged in, good. Now we'll plug this in to prompt to boot from the charging ports. Watch it not even turn on now. There it goes. There it goes. And now we may need to be a little patient here. Yeah, it's gonna go through the loading thing again. All right, so that's gonna take a few minutes. Um, I am going to go smoke a cancer stick. I'm not gonna end the live, as I don't think it means anything to end the live and then start it back up to finish up this 11. Um, so I'm sure I'll lose all you, my viewers, all four of you. Uh, but <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. All right, looks like that's done. Let's see. Yeah, I have IMEI. It is just a sandwich issue. All right, so what are we gonna do? We are going to reball the sandwich. And we will turn this off. Perfect, take all these out. So, only two people are watching, but at the end of the video, if I get this iPhone 11 to work, which I more than likely will, I am going to give it away. It's my iPhone I bought for like 150 bucks. I overpaid for it. Um, but I felt like, hey, it'd be cool to do something nice for the viewers, which I don't have many of. But that's okay. We can't all be like Jesse. All right, so the first step of reballing the sandwich is to wick the sandwich. So we will go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a shitty day in Florida today. It's rainy. It's warm. It's nice and warm, but it just looks nasty outside. And this is, again, Goot Wick, the, the best wick that I've ever discovered. I mean, it is, it is literally perfect for damn near everything. And just like that. All right. Now we're going to clean, clean, clean all of that flux. Notice I didn't add any flux to the board while I was wicking. And that's just because I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. And I don't need it. There was already some there. And there's just a tad in the, flux, uh, in the wick as well. So that kind of mixed together works perfectly. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, use extra flux, at least at that point. What the heck is that? Looks like part of the board is peeling right there. It's all right. That won't affect anything. Uh, I can. Yeah, they'll be all right. Saying I could wick that again makes that a little pretty, but it's okay. It will work out just fine the way it is. All right, that's clean. Now we'll move on to the top board. Mm -mm -mm. So for those of you rejoining us um, after my smoke break, the restore went through. I did have IMEI in the jig, which tells me that it is just a sandwich issue. And now we are going to reball the sandwich. Reballing the sandwich. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I got some of my wick caught up in the pads there we go get that out of there that would have definitely been a problem if i didn't catch it Get over here too. Now, again, another reason I'm wicking these is because I am expecting, or um, yeah, expecting a uh, a pad to come with it. Okay, and if that happens, again, that's just easier to identify what is wrong with the device, right? So if, if I don't wick it and I just repop the sandwich, it could work. It 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 may it probably will. Um, but it, it, it could come back with an issue and what I've noticed is if I wick them, pads that are barely hanging on will come right off and then I can easily identify and repair it properly. So well, now we'll do the same that we did for the bottom board. We'll just clean this up and I'm also going to take this out of here, this thermal compound. We don't need it. And you'll notice there, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it there, but you see the little standoff right there. I'm gonna keep them there. And if it if it didn't, if it came off with my wicking, I normally put like one or two of those little standoffs on either side of the board. That way it doesn't kind of sink in in the middle when I'm re-sandwiching it. Um, but if there if one of them stays or two of them stay, then I don't even bother with that step. I just can't keep them there. All right, that looks good. Now we will go ahead and get the stencil out for the reballing. I believe 
this is for the 11. Yep, right there. And we will put the bottom board in just like that. Get our stencil. Now we're going to make sure our stencil is clean. Are clean enough to do the job. Uh, it's really not. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add some heat to my stencil and then we're going to clean it up. I add heat because it, it helps the flux melt. It's easier to clean if it's hot. We'll get a paper towel. Take another look at it. Let's see how clean it is now. Uh, all right, that looks pretty good. That should be fine. All right. Now we will go ahead and put the stencil over top of the board okay just like that all right we're gonna make sure everything is good now sometimes with this stencil what I do is I uh, put down a piece of caption tape just to hold down the stencil there on the edges just like that right here perfect that kind of holds it flat um, and we'll get our 138 and a glove Gloves are very important because it's leaded solder, right? And y'all have heard of lead poisoning, I'm sure. It's bad for you. All right, so I reball things with my fingers because I'm weird. Jesse always laughs at me or makes fun of me for it, but I do it anyway. I like the way the balls feel on my hand. And I'm just kind of rubbing it in, right? You see, I'm just rubbing the the uh, the paste on, trying to get it in every hole. Perfect, just like that. And now I'm going to clean off with a dry piece of paper towel, no ISO or anything, just a dry piece, and just kind of rub away all the extra uh, paste, right? And now it should, when you're done, look like this, right? No, that's not how it should look. I missed a bunch. You see over here I've missed some, over here I've missed some. So we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna add a little bit more. Just like that, right? Uh, down here a little bit too, perfect. All right, that looks, that's looking good. Get our paper towel back. Again, just clean the excess off. Perfect. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready. We're gonna pull, first pull a pair of tweezers that we don't care about. These are the tweezers that I don't care about, right? We're gonna put them to the side. We are going to put the top of our reballing station on. Like, get this out of the way, you can't see. Okay, so we have it on like that. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my air, or my heat to 371 and my airflow to about 70. That's what I use for reballing. Again, the temperature of the paste is 138, right? So if I'm using 341 um, or 371 and my, uh, ugh, and my paste is at 138, then this should melt properly. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing it up here. <coughs> Excuse me, right? I am heating up the stencil okay I'm trying to get this all pretty hot all right and I'm doing this because it's going to help the stencil from flexing up when it gets heat right so these these stencils they all do it they all when they get hot and they get hot too quick they buckle okay and when they buckle it's gonna make your reball trash so what we do is we, we heat up 
the uh, the the entire stents. We'll try to get it as, as pretty much as close to the 371 as we can. Now it's not going to get to 371. It's probably going to get to about 100, maybe 150 Celsius. Okay, um, and that's when we're going to bring it in. Now it's not going to stop the buckling altogether. It's just going to help it a lot. Okay, and that's why we have the tweezers that we don't care about. Um, because we are going to actually press down on the stencil with those tweezers uh, and we use the tweezers that we don't care about because if we use the ones that we did we'd be mad when we bent the tips because that's exactly what will happen so we are just kind of bringing this up to temperature trying to get it hot And yes, Nate, I did take a, a smoke break, and I blame you for every time I take a smoke break because I was off nicotine, well, I was off smoking for six, three months, and then I went to the expo, and Nate just forced me to smoke cigarettes the entire time, like like a jerk. I, I would, every time you hang out with Nate, he, he's just going to force you to do something bad. I don't take responsibility for my own actions, as you can see. All right, so I'm, I doubt that's going to be ready, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our scope, and we're going to bring in our hot air to the corner, and I'm holding, and I'm just going to wait until it starts to, the paste starts to solidify and became, become a single solder ball. And you'll see it's starting to work over here. Over here is getting hot. And, and this is what, there we go. Now we're starting to get some progress here. Come on, melt them together. Let's go. All right, we're gonna move along. We're gonna bring them down. And again, we're holding down with our tweezers so our stencil doesn't flip up. See like over here, it's all picked up and that's kind of what it looks like. So we're gonna press back down and we're gonna add some heat gonna let these balls solidify on the pads bring a wear heat move the board heater and we're gonna keep them coming bring them back down over here come on now solidify properly don't make me look bad on the live now come on now you see some of them are not solidifying and you see some of them are missing like that couple over there we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to handle that we're not gonna completely redo the reball we're gonna fix it we're gonna do it a little differently first we're gonna finish our reball though this is one of the things I can tell you that I struggled with when I first started was the panic when everything is not going perfect right I was like oh this reball is trash now because that happened no it's absolutely not trash keep with it stick with it and you can fix your, uh, the things that didn't work out 100% later. And I will show you. Come on now, solidify. Solidify. Although with the amount of pads missing on this one, we might have to reball it, we'll see. And we're gonna keep moving up. Keep moving up the board. All right, that looks really good, um, except for down here in this area, which we will fix here just in a moment. Right, that looks all pretty good. So, um, what we are going to do now is take a look. Yeah, over here really got kind of messed up. Um, yeah, that's a lot. We may just reball. Ah, eh, fuck it. I'll show you guys how I do it when there's a couple of pads like that. Um, so next we're going to do is add flux, if I can find it. I'm just going to kind of run the flux along. And we're doing this while the board's still hot, so our flux kind of melts right away. We might have to reball this sandwich. That's that's a lot of pads that I messed up over there, but it's okay. 
we're gonna we're gonna wing with it we're gonna do it the, the way i normally do okay so now we're gonna kind of just like we would a bga chip we're gonna um heat them up again bring them all make them all look uniform make them all look as good as possible all right so now we have a bunch of pads that didn't get balls what do we do very easy first we're going to take our board off of this little reballing jig get that out of here and now what we're going to do is we're going to look all right yeah i'm going to have to reball this there's just too many it'll take all day um, all right, but I'm, so, I'm just going to show you how I do it, okay? If, if, for instance, only if you have like two or three that are missing, which is normally what happens, you're going to take your stencil, okay? And normally you'll see some balls in the stencil from when you messed up. Um, yeah, like right here. There's one. There's one. So what we'll do is we'll take one, right? Yeah, that's a little flat try to find a good one and if you can't find a good one this is what we'll do so I'm gonna have to reball this sandwich anyway so just to show you guys of course I mess up on life we're gonna take our stencil and we're gonna add some of 138 just to this bottom over here right and then we're going to heat that up Just like that now we have all of those perfectly sized balls we are going to take our board we're just gonna put them there there's one two maybe maybe two there we go all right and then what we would do is kind of make sure they're touching the pads right perfect all right that's good enough And now we're gonna heat again, but we're gonna keep our hair, our hair, our air high so our balls don't fly away. All right? So we're gonna kind of gently bring it closer, gently bring it closer, and bam! You see, that's that is how we would replace like two or three pads that didn't actually stick. And I'm probably not gonna reball this. I'm gonna actually just fix this. So what we're gonna do is what I do is we don't need to fix the ground ones, right? Just the ones that actually are important or data lines or power lines. So we're gonna probe, Let's see. Okay. All right, that one's important. Not important, not important, 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 and not important, not important, no, no. No, oop, maybe. No. Important. 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 Yeah. No. 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 Yes. No. So this one. So yeah, there's a few that need to be like these four need to be done. Screw it. I'm just gonna do it. Instead of sitting here thinking about which one I want to do, I'll just repair this sandwich. One. I'm like still debating in my head if it's faster to reball the sandwich or to fix these pads. And if it keeps going like this, where it won't get off my damn. Uh, Tweezer, it's gonna be faster to reball the sandwich. Ooh, it is one storming outside right now. Oh my goodness. There we go, finally. Go over there, perfect, okay. <laughs> All these balls are going underneath the stencil. 
All right, so we got three. We'll go ahead and do those three right now really quick. If you do a ton of them at once, they fly all over the place and you can't really keep an eye and make sure they're not flying. So I try to only do a few at a time. I don't know if this one over here is gonna work because I don't have any flux on it. Yeah, they worked, perfect. All right, so we got one more over there in that area to do. Yeah, um, brother, I don't know how you're successful with that. That's a bunch of bullshit if you ask me, the late Apple. Sit there and just run 138 over it instead of reballing it properly. Yeah, right. I don't mean to call you on your bullshit, but uh, go live and do that. Let's see how that works out for you. So, I believe, um, this one was not important, not important. Not important, not important. All right, so those two are important. So we're gonna do two more. I mean, Valid, when, when, when they're, they're no fix, yeah, I do that. Like, I'm not gonna reball a sandwich that's a no fix, especially on a 12 or a 13. But for a functional device, no. No way, no. If you don't stop sticking to my damn tweezers, I swear. Add some more glue, AKA flux. I'll just hold it there. Look at these two trying to join together. Come on. Don't be a bitch. There we go. Oh, you son of a bitch. Nice and slow with the air so they don't go anywhere. And bring them in close, slowly. Bam, just like that. All right, so I think I got like three more to go or some shit like that. Let's see. Yep, that's an important one too. So now let's see back to where over here. That's important. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no. All right, so we got like what? One, two, one, two. I think three more to do. Yeah, there's the third right there. All right, oh, what about this one? Oh, that's four. Four more to do.
So there's one more. I don't remember where it is in all these grounds. I think it's... Right there. Right there, said the blind man. This last one, and then we are good to go. Beautiful. All right. So now we're just going to put this back together. And that's probably one of the easiest parts. We're going to put this back here. We want to make sure that the board has a good amount of flux on it. Like down here, I want to just kind of hit again with flux just to make sure it's got enough oh damn oh I already checked those okay alright so now with what we're gonna do is we are going to be <laughs> No, Nate, I'm not 12 anymore. I don't make ball jokes. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the board is cool when we start this. Like it's not hot, okay? Uh, and we're going to do the alignment first, right? So we're just going to make sure everything is aligned while the board is cool. And we use our tweezers. Make sure that's aligned. All right, now we're going to heat and wait. That's the, oh, came on the line because I tipped the board heater. All right, that's good. So while we're waiting, anybody want to place bets if it works? I give it a 50-50. Normally when there's that many pads that need that didn't get uh, soldered during a reball, I just reball the sandwich entirely. Um, make it all look good and uniform, but just, I did want to show you guys how I do just single pad replacements on sandwiches. All right. So while we wait for that to get done, this is the last device that we had today to work on, um, that I'm going to do live anyway. Uh, you know, let me know if you enjoyed the video. It's almost two hours now um, to go through those three devices. We did a, um, a Mac, uh, an iPad Air 2 that had a main short, which had also had a weird current draw. Um, we went through a MacBook Air that had liquid damage on the SPI circuit. All right. And then we had this iPhone 11 uh, that had baseband issues. And so we got them all working. Um, the iPhone 11, you know, at the very most, only a sandwich reball because um, that wasn't perfect. But uh, I do believe it's going to work the way it is. Um, trying to think, is there anything else you know I want to go over with you while we're waiting for this? Um, you know, let me know in the in the comments if you enjoyed the video. If you want me to do more of these, um, you know, I, I mainly did this to to try and show you guys. You know, I get asked almost every day to do some training, and I I simply just don't have time to do training. Uh, so I figured, you know, if, if I'm making live videos showing you how I'm doing these repairs, it might be easier for you guys to pick up and go that route. So, um, uh, sorry, I was reading comments. Um, so, you know, let me know how much you enjoyed the video and, uh, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. So we're now we're just kind of waiting for the sandwich to get up to temperature to melt that 138 paste and go from there, kind of do what we do from there.
Hello. Still not, still not there yet. And and what I'm looking at, and I'll bring the scope in, is uh, that way you guys can see. I don't use a scope for this part, but um, essentially when it's ready, I got some smoke. I don't know if smoke's coming from the board or the board heater. I will assume it's from the board. Hopefully not from the board heater. That might be catching on fire. Who knows? Um, so what I'm looking for is essentially if I tap it, just like a BGA chip, you'll see how it's jumping back into place. That's surface tension. That's what I'm looking for, right? I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Bump, bump. That's good. It's in place. Now I'm going to turn off our heat, and we're just going to simply wait. We're going to let the board cool, um, and go, and then we're going to test it, right? So like I said, this is uh, my device that I purchased like two months ago for $150. I overpaid for it, um, but it did have this baseband issue when I bought it. It's um, Otherwise, it is in good condition. I don't know where I put the housing at, but it looks like the back may have been replaced. Probably had been replaced. Here it is. Um, the other, it, it, it does, I would say, A condition. I'm giving it away um, at the end of the video, it just you know, as a kind of a thanks for watching type of thing. If it works, if not, I might have to repull it. Uh, but other than that, yeah. Uh, so let's do some more repairs. Um, I, I don't really know. I haven't opened more repairs yet. I gotta open up and see what I got. Uh, you know, I don't really like to do um, too many MacBooks live because of the diagnostic. It's, it's something that is just it's really in depth. It's hard to follow if you're not familiar with schematic reading and stuff like that. Um, and and it, it, it can just get complicated really quickly and I don't want to be too boring I know that watching me doing these repairs is probably boring enough um, but, but but doing all of the schematic and board view and stuff like that I think it's gonna be too much for a live but you know if you guys disagree let me know I'll start doing MacBooks live too uh, I did the one and I did that one because it's an A1466 which is like the easiest MacBook to repair you don't even need schematics really for it. I mean, it's just kind of bop, 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 and you're done uh, type of thing. So like I was mentioning earlier, um, if, if you're trying to learn how to do MacBook board level repair, definitely start on that board. It's an 00165 is the board model, um, but the, the model it comes is with the A1466. So really the fantastic board to work on or to learn on. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Um, so now, um, now that uh, this has been a few minutes here, I'm just gonna um, kind of tilt this down so you can see how I'm doing this. Is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, from the bottom of the board, I'm gonna kind of pick it up like a spatula, right? And I'm gonna put it over here and just gently set it down. And I do that so it cools so much faster, right? Because this board heater is still gonna be burning hot and it's gonna keep that board hot. So I just, for a few minutes, I let it cool off. Um, and then I kind of do the spatula trick where I take the board off the board heater and then I just move this over to the side. And that will definitely speed up the process in which, um, in which this, uh, this uh, board cools, sorry. All right, now what I do is, I'm very impatient, so now what I do is that as soon as I feel like the solder is officially not melted anymore, but the board's still hot, I go ahead and put it on the bottom of my scope, and that cools it off in like 30 seconds. All right, so now we're going to get the frame ready, get the screen right here, and we are going to hope that this activates so I can do three for three repairs on live, um, they're all, all repairable thankfully um, even if the iPhone 11 doesn't work I know what went wrong it's gonna be the sandwich um, that is causing the problem so I could just reball the sandwich I probably won't do that live you guys just saw how I do that um, and it's my phone so I'm not I got to get back to my my queue but uh, I did want to do this one because I thought I'd give away it would be pretty cool and I was like might as well repair it in the video um, Nate, nobody likes, no, I'm just kidding, Nate. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I think the scope, the scope, like, it's completely cool to the touch right now. In 30 seconds, the scope base cools it immediately. I, I love it. Um, 
Alright, so yes, it goes this way, right? No, it goes this. I do that almost every time with the 11. I, I, I attempt to put the board in the wrong direction first. Alright, squeeze this in here. Come on, guys. Get out of my way. I'm not sure if you can hear that weather outside, but whew, it is coming down hard. So we will, now if this works and I'm able to activate, I will have to restore again because I restored without any of the face ID components attached, which means face ID will not work um, unless I restore again with the working face ID attached. So if this all works out to, and I'm able to activate it, the first step that I will take is to go ahead and do another restore. All right, and we are being ballsy. We're not even gonna check and see if the sandwich is shorted. We're just gonna plug in a battery and see what happens. Pray for me. First step of praying is, does it turn on? Yes, it does. All right, prayer number one worked. Now we go for prayer number two and to see if we have baseband, if it activates, <clears throat> excuse me. We need baseband and NFC and Wi-Fi to activate. You technically don't need Wi-Fi to activate. You could hook it up to a computer to activate it, but we're not going to do that. We're going to try to activate it the old-fashioned way. Perfect. English. And you can see how the screen, or, or I'm not sure if you can, the screen orientation is off, and that is because I restored it without a screen on. So the first step is Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi that's working. That's on the bottom board, so that part of the sandwich is working. And now we pray. This is the part where it's going to say unable to activate or able to activate. Let's see what it says. Fingers crossed. Watch it be iCloud. Hey, it activated. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. That is, oop, I don't want to move data. That is a new working device perfect beautiful and now we're just going to check a couple of things we're going to do star pound zero six pound make sure the imi shows up and you see face id i clicked it off really quickly but it's popped up saying face id doesn't work and that's simply because I restored it without being plugged in. I will have to restore it again. All right. Oop. Camera is working. Yes, cameras are working. Volume buttons and power buttons are working. Good. Those are also on the bottom board and go to the top board. So that could also be an issue with the sandwich. And now the next step is I just run Apple Diagnostics on it. Um, you know, I'm part of an IRP, so I'm, I'm able to do that. Um, I said grade A. The screen is not grade A. Um, it's probably going to be grade B. It's got some scratches on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm giving this device away. Comment if you want, if you want the device, um, and I'll pick my favorite person. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll find a way to do it fair. Um, but yeah, that is it for this live. Maybe if I can get my camera working. That is it for this live. Um, you know, if you want me to continue to do this, comment. Let me know you want me to continue to do this. If you don't want to see my ginger face anymore, you just comment that as well. You'll be like, get out of here, ginger. We don't like you no more. And I will respect that. You know, I will disappear into the sunset quietly. Not really. I'll bitch about it. But still, um, just let me know. I think I think that's it. I'm going to stop, stop streaming. Have a good one. Have a good one, guys. Let me know if, how you enjoy the content.